So, hello everyone. My name is Philip, and today I'm going to talk about pharmacopias. So, to start things off, let us define what are pharmacopias. Basically, they're books that contain directions for the identification and control of medicines, and they're usually published by the authority of a government or a medical or pharmaceutical society. Now, a lot of the time when you start looking at pharmacopias, you'll see that there are references being made to these books. So if you see a reference being made to these books, the use of the title or subtitle of a monograph implies that the article that you're reading complies with the requirements of the relevant monograph throughout its period of validity. Now, one example of this is when you're reading specifications for a particular drug product. If it references, let's say, an article in USP, that it means that that particular part of the specification uh, follows the USP article. Now, another thing that you should be aware of is what is a monograph? Basically, a monograph is a document that contains the descriptions of preparations. In a broader sense, it is a reference work for pharm pharmaceutical drug specifications. So again, if you're looking at let's say for a given drug product, let's say ivermectin, okay? Uh, mo the monograph contains all the specifications that the ivermectin drug product should meet or should pass. Now, let's talk about some commonly seen pharmacopias. I will talk mainly about two of them. The first one is USP. USP stands for the United States Pharmacopoeia, and also it actually comes in two parts. Okay, one is the USP, the other is the NF, or the National Formulary. Now, the Pharmacopoeia is actually a combination of two official compendia. Okay, and the monographs for drug substances and medicinal products are actually featured in the USP, whereas the dietary supplements and ingredients and also excipients, okay? They're actually uh, featured in the NF or the National Formulary. So again, USP have two separate uh, documents, if you will, two separate compendia. One is the USP, which contains all the drug substances, and the other one is NF, which contains information for excipients. Now, the other pharmacopoeia that we often see is the European Pharmacopoeia or the EP. Sometimes we all also call it the PH Euro European Pharmacopoeia. Now, monographs for drug substances and excipients are both featured within the European Pharmacopoeia. Uh, monographs on pharmaceutical preparations are actually not elaborated inside EP with the exception of those on immunocera for human use, immunocera for vet veterinary use, some biological preparations such as insulin, uh, radiopharmaceutical preparations, and also vaccines for human and also veterinary use. Now, there's actually other pharmacopias that you'll see that are being used. So the ones that I was talking about, USP and EP, are the ones that are commonly used and commonly seen. But there are actually other pharmacopoeias from other countries, such as Japan and China. So they usually come in similar formats. Now, let's talk about some common sections that you often see in pharmacopoeias. The first section that you often see is general notices. Basically, it's always the first section of pharmacopias. The reason for this is because it contains all the general issues that are applicable to all of the texts throughout the pharmacopia. Usually, it provides the basic information to the user, such as the rules and also conventional expressions, so that as you go along and read the pharmacopia, you'll understand uh, what certain terms mean or what certain abbreviations mean. So it is very important that before you start reading any pharmacopia that you should always start with the general notices. Now the second section that we often see is general chapters. 
uh, within these sets of chapters, you it actually provides you with the standard methods that can be used uh, throughout the pharmacopoeia. So it also avoids repeating some standard methods that are being used in each individual monograph. And also it gives you the general requirements for equipment and also for equipment verification. Okay. Now, basically, a lot of the methods, basically, the, they are the analytical methods that we're using in a lot of the drug substance testing or what have you. Okay. They often overlap. So rather than having each method being reprinted each time for each separate monograph, what you have is just a general chapter that contains all of the methods that are generally being used with all of the relevant details there. Now, the third section is general monographs. Actually, this was a concept from EP, so from the European Pharmacopoeia. Now, the standards of European Pharmacopoeia are represented by general and also individual monographs. And the use of general monographs has provided uh, standards that best fulfill the standards of the pharma, uh, European Pharmacopoeia and also meets the needs of users. It is usually necessary to apply one or more general monographs along with any individual monograph. And also, any individual monograph may exceptionally include an exemption from one or more provisions of the general monograph. Now, in most cases where a substance is subject to the provisions of both a general monograph and an individual monograph, the two are actually complementary. Now, the last section is usually the individual monographs. Okay, so to compare the two between general and mono, uh, general and individual monographs, general is basically applicable to all of the substances that you're that are being listed in the pharmacopoeia, whereas individual monographs are drug product specific or product specific, if you will. So individual monographs are specifications that follow a set of requirements. Okay, one, the presentation format, two, test procedures, and number three, the acceptance criteria. Now, this is important because when you are doing testing on a drug product, sure, you know what tests to carry out, but you also need to know what is considered passing and what is considered failing. So having the acceptance criteria there is also very, very important. Also, individual monographs are subdivided into three sections. First part is the description. In the description, it will usually tell you the name of the substance and also list out the um, properties of the drug product and it also usually shows you the chemical formula as well. Second section is the identification. So in this particular part it will tell you how you should go about identifying that particular drug product or substance that you're looking at. And also the last section is tests. Of course as part of uh, all the drug products or any particular product that you're looking at, you need to carry out a series of tests. Now, within the test section, it will be subdivided into two types of tests. One is purity testing, the other is assay testing. Now, one final note concerning pharmacopias in general. The purpose of a monograph or pharmacopia is to assure adequate purity in the interests of public health, but it has not the aim of imposing excessive requirements that can restrict unnecessarily the ability of the manufacturers to produce compliant products. So the takeaway message is this, having pharmacopoeia in place is not really trying to restrict us from um, manufacturing the product. It's actually serves as a general guideline for all manufacturers to follow to ensure that drug product that we make are of good quality before we ship it off to the end users, which are our patients. So that's it, and thank you for listening.